Coming up this week on Animal Outtakes, he's more than the average bear. This is all part of what we do, you know, for enrichment for the animals. Keep them busy, keep their minds stimulated. Stanley will keep you engaged with his enrichment activities. We visit a safe haven on the Sun Coast, where volunteers make it their mission to give these animals the best life possible. They have just as much right to, you know, a normal, natural life as, as the rest of us do. Plus, these river otters are making their picks, using their daily target training to choose the upcoming Super Bowl winner. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outlaws. Quite often on Animal Outtakes, we like to highlight the people who work hard to give rescued animals a better life. We recently visited Elmira Sanctuary, and I have to tell you, we were impressed. It's a safe haven where you can get close to some amazing animals and learn about the consequences of the exotic pet trade from over the years. The CEO doesn't mince words and hopes that experiencing Elmira's in person will make an impression on future generations. Tucked away a bit off the beaten path is a sanctuary called Elmira's, where you will meet quite the cast of characters. From Stanley to Chuff Chuff, you will be mesmerized by the power and natural abilities these animals possess. Founder Robin Greenwood works with a small army of volunteers to provide enrichment and care for exotic and wild animals in need of a forever home. Robin, we're in this beautiful sanctuary in Waimama, Florida, and it's called Elmira. Why? Well, um, back about 15 years ago, um, my husband and his business partner had been rescuing animals, um, primarily large exotic animals, and they had a pair of bears um, that everybody thought was too old to breed. And then one day there was a baby bear. And uh, so this was well before the sanctuary was even in, in, in a vision at all. Um, so uh, we raised up that baby bear and we named her Elmira. And then, so when the time came to become a sanctuary, we uh, um, you know, were like, well, what are we gonna name this place? You know, you gotta put something down on your incorporation paperwork. So finally, my husband says, well, just name it after the bear. So we named it after the bear. What and a great honor for yeah, Elmira. That's right. <laughs> Unfortunately, Elmira passed away uh, a year ago, Christmas Eve. We miss her terribly. And what age? Um, she was only 18. She had liver failure. But Elmira's legacy lives on. So. But you've expanded so beautifully. Oh, I know. Since last, it's been, what, six years? Yes, you've been about here? six years yeah. ago. And it was it kind has. of small. And, uh huh. We and, basically doubled yes. our size. And right. somehow you've managed to keep this intimate. That's, that's the whole point. Um, you know, we're an all volunteer organization, which means that the people that are here are here because they want to help the animals. It's the only reason that they are here. You know, nobody's here for money or, or fame huh? <laughs> or anything like that. They're just here for the animals, you know, because not everybody gets an experience, you know, to experience these exotic animals in a safe way. And, and you know, because there is a need, you know, they know they're not going to go and and you know, frequent one of these cub petting establishments or something like that, because that's not what they're into. They're into taking right. care of animals that need care through no fault of their own, and, and which a, is what the guys are here. What for. a wonderful sanctuary, because kids today are just pegged to the computer. Sure are. And they you sure can't are. get this type of feeling. No, you can't, you, know? you can't. And sometimes they come out here and they're like, oh. Well, yeah, because <laughs> they've never seen this. Sure. And to see them in person, can make quite an impression. Lucy is an Indian leopard who enjoys her daily enrichment activities. What these are, are they're called a melanistic leopard. If you were to look at her real close, you can see that she's got spots also, just like you know your orange leopard that you, that you see. Lucy here, we've had since a baby. She was a baby and she is a feisty thing. Add a girl, come on, get it. Get it! Yay! Yay! This is all part of what we do, you know, for enrichment for the animals. Keep them busy, keep their minds stimulated. 
frequently people will buy an exotic pet and realize that oh, this really isn't for me. Um, so we have some lemurs and we have a cotamundi and a lot of people don't even know what a cotamundi is. It's a meat-eating insectivore known as a South American raccoon. It's been said owning one is like having a toddler with sharp claws and teeth. This is Nibbler and Nibbler is a cotamundi and he was purchased as a pet by somebody at, who knows, a flea market or something like that. Um, when cotamundis reach maturity, male cotamundis, um, they can get really aggressive. You can probably see how long his nails are. He's also got teeth to match uh, because they, they dig in. Well, you can see how he's playing with the bottle and trying to get the stuff, because that's what they do. They dig and they search for stuff. Um, and uh, a Nibbler, like I said, he was somebody's pet and they kept having to have a bigger, a bigger and a bigger enclosure and he was aggressive with them because of course he's a wild animal. Um, and so finally they did the right thing and called us and said, hey, you know, we can't do this. So yeah, these exotics really don't make good pets. Um, you know, these guys here, not only are they aggressive, they have very large teeth, very large claws. They're gonna be, they're gonna scratch you up. You know, as I always say, he would be more than happy to rip your face off. Um, and, you know, that's just the way it is. And it's the same with Zeb behind us here, too. Zeb is a ring-tailed lemur who Robin says still deserves a good life despite his aggressive behavior. Because they didn't ask for this. I mean, Zeb would be much happier on Madagascar with a whole troop of ring-tailed lemurs just jumping from tree to tree and, and having a grand old time and, and fighting. But instead, you know, he's stuck in a cage. Um, he lost his mate several years ago. We don't have another ring tail at this time. Um, you know, his joy in life is threatening to rip our faces off. He's not a good pet. In fact, he was confiscated from somebody's house by Fish and Wildlife, Florida Fish and Wildlife. Um, and uh, um, because apparently, from what I understand, he actually did hurt somebody. Just because they're cute and cuddly doesn't mean that they're nice. People look at him, oh, he's so cute. For sure, he's adorable, but he'll still rip your face off, <laughs> you know? Um, we have a couple of other lemurs that maybe aren't quite so aggressive. All you can do is give them the best life that you can, you know, with the limitations that we have. Which is what volunteers work to do every day with these two massive tigers. Chuff Chuff and his neighbor, Little Al. Hi. Hi. This is Little Al. Oh, little. Little Al, oh. yes. He is our uh, two tigers out here in these big areas are our largest tigers. They probably weigh around 500 pounds, maybe a little more, a little less. They're both 15 years old. Um, and actually, 15 is pretty good age for a white tiger. Look and at that paw. But yes, oh he's my. got dinner plate it's, paws, oh and he does use them as dinner plates sometimes. Yeah. You'll see he'll have a piece wow. of food on there, and he just kind of starts nibbling on there. He's a big baby, though. He uh, was actually originally bred to be a circus tiger, um, and he is one of the most playful tigers that we have. He uh, loves playing with his toys. You can see he's got that big ball on the hill. He'll knock it down the hill, sure. and he'll drag it into the pond over there and all that. Um, so these enclosures are actually new. Um, when we shut down back in um, March of last year, these were not complete. So one of the neat things um, when people come for our new tours is they'll be able to see um, the tigers out here in these great big uh, play areas out here. I got to take part in an enrichment activity for Chuff Chuff. He's almost 15 and was originally bred for the cub petting industry. Robin says he was deemed too rowdy by his original owners. Marsha is going to operate the wagon. Look what we've got for you, buddy. As you can see, he's a big boy. No, he is. What's in there, Chuff? Uh, oh, yeah, it came loose. Well, it moved a little bit. Yeah. So we like we'll do. Um, sometimes we'll take the wolves out here and then let tigers out, and vice versa, because they like you know they smell each other. Unfortunately, arthritis has set in for this old boy. So the fact that they've been getting more exercise and whatnot has really, you know, helped a lot. You know, 
Chuff may have arthritis issues, but he still gets out there and, and yeah. moves around and all that now kind of stuff. Now, you mentioned so. that he was bred really for circus. Circus, correct. Did he yes. ever spend any time? No. From what I understand, um, somebody fairly knowledgeable one time told me that from what they understood, only about one out of every 30 tigers that are bred for the circus actually make it into the circus. Um, as everybody knows, over this last year, um, the people, the world, has been more made more aware of, of <coughs> roadside zoos. Thank you, Joe Exotic. Um, but the places like that are all over the place, and uh, um, we do kind of a bad job of regulating them here in this country. But now people are, are, are realizing that these are not good places. Unfortunately, which means that the people who do breed for these, they're doing more euthanasia now instead of passing them off to the roadside zoos and, and whatnot. But there's still big money, you know, people still want to pet, even when they know, they still want to pet those baby tigers. Sure. And uh, sure. it's just, you know. But baby tigers grow up. And they grow up fast. To, to a 15 year old, we've had yeah. tigers old as 22. Um, and you know, you figure 12 to 16 weeks of pet cub petting and 22 years of life. Um, it's not very prevalent here in Florida anymore because um, laws have gotten passed and things like that. But there are states that are still, you know, a lot less free and easy. Um, and uh, so um, there are places that you can still go and, you know, pet the babies. And then, okay, the baby hits six week and week, can't be petted anymore. Now what do you do with it? And we got to get some more. And, you know, in the wild, tigers only breed every couple of years. They certainly don't breed several times a year. Yeah. So, uh, so we do encourage, you know, people to, to support the Big Cat Public Safety Act. Um, and uh, I realize there are some out there that don't agree with it for different reasons maybe than the, the cub petting. Um, but, you know, we do feel that it's important. Just a short walk across the property, we came upon another beautiful pair of tigers who are siblings. Court and Lexi came from a facility that was shut down by USDA and Florida Fish and Wildlife back uh, 12, 13 years ago. And so they were babies then. We got to have baby tigers. That's the only time we've had baby tigers. Um, however, they uh, um, are now all grown up and they're 13 this year. And uh, so, but they still live together. You'll see that Court's um, ears are kind of scrunchy. That's because they were taken from their mother at three days old to be used for petting, cub petting. And uh, so they, uh, um, she suckled on his ears because you know, she wanted her mom. Um, so, but anyway, so they still live together. And uh, Is that rare to have them live together? It is. Um, some places do really well with them, but the fact that they, they're both spayed and neutered, obviously, which helps a lot. Um, but it is, in general, they don't, like those two, are the two girls up front are sisters. Mm -hmm. And once they hit maturity, they didn't get along anymore. So, oh look, stinky face. Oh. Do you stinky face for us? Oh, there she comes. There she comes. There she comes. We call the, that's the lounge back there. They, when they come out, they, like they all potty along here. And then they go back there and that's where they hang out. They're, I, they literally, the table back there, they moved it back there, we did not. As a true sanctuary, Robin says they do not participate in the commercial trade of animals, and they do not breed them. The purpose? To make amends to these animals. You know, as, as, a, as a true sanctuary, um, when an animal comes here, no matter how it gets here, um, this is their home for life. We aren't going to take it out for show. We're not going to breed it. Um, we always you know, let it do what it wants to do, not what we necessarily want. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, try and, and encourage it with, you know, but like I said, enrichment stimulates their brains and gives them something to do. So of course we're gonna try and, but as you saw with Lucy, we don't force anybody or anything or anyone to do it. Um, if you come out here for a tour, you may come out in this big old area and both of those tigers are in those den boxes and you don't see a thing, but you know what, we're not gonna make them come out. No, of course not. Uh, there are, you know, zoos and whatnot. The animals go out in the morning and they shut access to all of that so they can't go back in. Um, and uh, that's fine if they have nice fancy places for them. Well, you know, let them live. Exactly. We, the best we can. Obviously, this is not India. It's only an acre. Um, but compared to, you know, being in a small cage or, you know, the alternative 
um, you know, this is the best we can do. And that's, and that's I think, our whole point and whole purpose. And with many of the other places where you go to, all of us is we're here for the lives of those animals. We want to give them the best life possible. They're not here to entertain us. And I don't care if it's a dog or a cat or a cotamundi or a tiger. You know, they have just as much right to, you know, a normal natural life as, as the rest of us do. For more information or how you can tour Elmira's, go to their website, elmiraswildlife.org. When we return, we introduce you to Stanley, and he's more than your average bear. And a little later in the show, some utterly serious Super Bowl picks. Stick around, there's more animal outtakes after the break. These last few months have been challenging for everyone, especially me. I've walked many, many miles. I learned new tricks. I lost my afternoon nap time. I've stayed up many nights watching movie after movie after movie. I'm suffering from cabin fever. I'm in need of a renewed spirit. Dante's Den is the perfect boarding solution for your dog whether it's an overnight, short, or extended stay. Dante's offers the convenience, amenities, and overall luxury your pet is seeking. Spacious, air-conditioned dens have private patios, overlooking scenic pool and lakeside views, a sparkling pool with fountains to play in, surrounded by chase loungers and a staff that will cater to their every wish. To make a boarding reservation for your pup, call us at 941-219 3730. Welcome back. Now it's time to meet Stanley. This grizzly bear just captured our hearts. He's been at Elmira's for quite a few years, and now they're looking to expand his living quarters. He has no trouble keeping himself busy or keeping visitors engaged with wondering what's he going to do next? This is Stanley, a brown bear who often captures your attention with his endless interest in enrichment activities. And today, he's looking for treats. Robin, we saw the star of the show. I know that all of the animals are stars, but he shines brightly. Yeah, Stanley. You can watch Stanley all day long. In fact, I frequently will stop and just watch Stanley for a while. He's just, he's just so much fun. Robin Greenwood leads up Elmira's Wildlife Sanctuary, an all-volunteer group that cares for this massive bear. And they estimate Stanley is about eight years old. We have a general idea of his origins, however, we don't know for sure. Details are sparse, but she says Stanley was quite habituated to people, so she guesses he was taken from his mother at a very young age. And he's very active. In fact, uh, the, our fish and wildlife officers have commented on, on how active and healthy and, and what, a good, what good shape that he is in. Um, so he, but yeah, he is definitely the star of the show. He's, he's just so fascinating. That's why our tours start and end with, San, with Stanley. Um, and that's probably where we end up spending the most time because you can just sit there and watch him. He is like a five-year-old with a toy. And now how much does he weigh? Our best guess is probably about 450. There's actually a formula that you can use based on how long he is and how tall he is and so on and so forth. Um, so, but anyway, best guess is probably about 450. How does he keep that girlish figure? Well, he um, actually is on a, I don't want to exactly say a strict diet. Um, however, we are very careful to not overfeed him. Um, he, since he's here in Florida, he doesn't hibernate like he might uh, in Alaska or something like that. And of course, also he, uh, um, you know, it's kind of warm here. So you'll see a lot of people will say, well, the, he's a lot smaller than, you know, the other grizzlies that we see. Okay, well, he doesn't need to fatten up like the, the Katami bears in Alaska in the fat bear contest. You know, he doesn't need to do that. He gets, you know, food all year round. If he's fat and hairy, then he's even hotter than ever. You know, I mean, this is Florida. Grizzly bears in general, you know. Hibernation. Yes. If they don't hibernate, 
Is that okay? That's fine. Um, I'll be honest with you, the, there's a lot of bears that don't necessarily hibernate the entire winter. Sometimes, um, and then this includes black bears too, they'll sleep for a while, and then they might come out and forage for some food and then go back in. Um, you know, generally, and that's why they fatten up, they do this whole fat bear thing, because when they go in, they've got to live off those fat stores. But they're not necessarily asleep asleep. That's when, you know, mama bears give birth and they're raising the, the babies and all that. So they're, you know, doing things. They're just staying in the dens. Um, and uh, they're living off those fat stores. And, but they're not necessarily sound asleep. So here in Florida, it's hot. They're not cold. They're just going to be bears. Robin says they're hoping to raise enough money to create an even bigger habitat for the incredibly smart bear. No. So he's living large. He is living large, and we're hoping he's going to be living an acre larger real soon. <laughs> How so wonderful. that's the that's that's the plan, and uh, so we are definitely actively fundraising for a, a one-acre expansion for Stanley, and really looking forward to that. For information on how you can help, go to the website elmiraswildlife.org, and you can also visit their Facebook page for more videos and information about Stanley. Coming up next, what's going on with these river otters? How target training may test their luck with Super Bowl predictions. After the break. Now we head to Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium where some pretty important training is underway. Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium and today we're going to be doing our training session for our Super Bowl picks with our North American River Otters. Good. Window. I think it's a great way to engage our um, visitors and our viewers to excite people about the animals and their training but also the people who are interested in football it might just capture those people's attention to come here and visit us at Moat. We train our otters five times a day, so they're pretty engaged and stimulated. Uh, the type of training that we're doing for the Super Bowl picks is the same training that we do with them every day. So they are trained to go to individual targets and we utilize that um, in the Super Bowl picks. We train all of our animals here at Moat because it provides us the opportunity to take care of them. We can train them in their cooperative care for things like getting voluntary weights, getting voluntary blood draws, those things that we need to do every year with them. We want to make sure it's comfortable and positive for them and it makes it easier for us to care for them. But beyond that, training is enriching, training is stimulating both mentally and physically. They are found right here in Sarasota, Florida, and North American River otters are found throughout the United States and upwards of Canada. The great thing is, is they're one of the only species of otters that is not either threatened or endangered. So their, their populations are stable right now. Huck is our male otter and he is the handsomest. He um, is actually, he has a very mild and mellow personality. This morning, he didn't want to do the Super Bowl picks right away. He wanted to check out everything else that was going on. Um, he's very quick and smart. He picks up things in, as in a training scenario, maybe a little quicker than the girls. Um, Jane is one of our female otters and she is, I would say, everybody's favorite otter. Not really, but she's spastic. She's crazy. She's got a personality and some spunk to her. Um, so she keeps us on our toes and she's very unique. And then Pippi also, she's our sweet girl. She squints her eyes a lot. That's how you can tell who she is between the two girls. Um, she's also, of course, really smart too, but they're all pretty awesome and very individual. I think it just adds a whole other level of just being able to be engaged and feel like you are in the natural environment. A lot of people are far removed from going out and being in nature, so that's what we want to bring to people when they come to visit us. It's going to allow them to have that connection and maybe care about the animals a little bit more. I think there's a disconnect when you watch something on TV. It's amazing to be able to learn from that, but come on and see it in person. After our shoot, Moat hosted the selection event, and the results are officially in. Huck chose not to participate, and that's okay. Pippi chose the Chiefs, and Jane picked the Bucks. So we will have to wait and see who's correct. Go Bucks! We'll be right back. 
We hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. We'll be back here again next week with some more animals and even more adventures. Until then, thanks for watching. Well, here we are in Wam why mama? Why mama? That's what you think. Just why mama? Why mama? Okay. There's a story behind that name too, but that's what I said. <laughs>